Hi everyone, it's Dr. Bishop here. In this video, we're going to go over a validity checklist for an article about diagnosis. Let's review the case and the article that we chose. You're seeing a patient who has chest pain and a positive stress test, and he asks you if you could do a coronary CAT scan instead of an angiogram to diagnose coronary artery disease. You came up with this PICO question. In patients with a high likelihood of coronary artery disease, is multi-detector computed tomography versus angiogram effective at diagnosing coronary artery disease? You then searched the literature and found this article that was published in JAMA that compared multi-detector CT versus angiogram. In this video, we are going to learn how to answer the first question. Are the results of the study valid? Like all the validity checklists, the one for diagnosis is available on the JAMA Evidence website. If you click to the user's guide and then navigate to the right-hand bar, you can click on Diagnostic Tests. And a critical appraisal worksheet pops up. I've outlined the three domains that are in the validity checklist for comparing diagnostic tests. As you can see, this checklist is much shorter than the checklist that we used to look for therapy validity. First, we have to ask, did the participating patients present a diagnostic dilemma? Second, did investigators compare the test to an appropriate independent reference standard? And finally, were those interpreting the test and reference standard blind to the other results? Let's start with the first question. Did participating patients present a diagnostic dilemma? We can answer this question by looking to see if subjects were drawn from a group in which it was not known whether the condition of interest was present or absent. If the patients in a study do not have a diagnostic dilemma or question, there is no value in looking at a new diagnostic test in those patients. But if there is a question about whether they have a diagnosis, then it's valuable to look at a new test. Let's look at the article to see if we can find the answer. If we scroll to the methods section of the article and look for the section where the patients are described, we can see what the authors write. Here it is. So the authors write, the CAT scan study was designed to prospectively include patients between the ages of 30 and 70 who were referred for clinically indicated non-emergency coronary angiography for evaluation of chest pain and for immediate, intermediate, or high probability of disease. So all these patients had a possibility of coronary disease, but it wasn't determined fully if they had that disease. So if we go back to this question, I think we're going to give that a check mark that the patients were drawn from a group where the condition of interest was, it was unclear whether the condition of interest was present or absent. The next set of questions asks, did investigators compare the test to an appropriate independent reference standard? Let's go back to our study design for diagnostic tests. Remember, in the best studies that look at the characteristics of a new diagnostic test, the researchers need to compare the new test with a gold standard test, or the best test that's available. This question about validity wants to ensure that we have a way of knowing whether a condition or disease is present or absent. And the best way of doing that is to see if it was present or absent using the gold standard test. To explore this question further, let's answer a few specific questions. The first question is, was an acceptable standard used? The second is, were the diagnostic test and standard independent of one another? Let's focus on this first question. Was an acceptable standard used? If we go back to the methods section of the article, the researchers describe their use of angiogram as a gold standard. Right here. So it does appear that they used a gold standard test to compare to multi-detector CT. If we go back to our checklist, we can give that question a check mark. The next question is were the diagnostic test and standard done independent of one another? 
This is an important question because we want to know whether the new test can replace the gold standard or be used instead of the gold standard. We are not looking to see whether it should be done in addition to or before or after the gold standard test. If we go to figure one, we can see that patients who were in the study had both the multi-detector CT test done and the angiogram done. So yes, both of these tests were done independently. If we go back to our checklist, let's give that question a check mark. Let's move on to the last domain. The last domain is, were those interpreting the test and the reference standard blind to the other results? Or were the diagnostic test and standard assessed without knowledge of the other results? In the case of this study, we want to know whether the person who read the CT scan knew the results of the angiogram and vice versa. This is important because if the person who read the CT scan knew the results of the angiogram, she might be biased to interpret the CT scan similarly to the angiogram. Like trials on therapy, blinding is an important concept to minimize bias of results. Let's take a look at the study to see if this was the case. If we continue to read on in the methods section, we can see what, that the authors write that all the MDCT studies were transferred for interpretation at the MDCT core lab at the University of Ulm. The conventional angiograms were analyzed at the angiography core lab at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation. And an independent adjudication process was performed to confirm agreement on segment nomenclature. It looks like both the people who are reading the MDCTs and the angiogram were not aware of the results of either one of them. Now that we've completed the validity checklist for a diagnostic test, let's pull everything together. Looking at our full checklist, we can see that the subjects in the study had a diagnostic dilemma. That is to say, they may or may not have had coronary artery disease. They, the researchers compared the new test the multi-detector CT with an acceptable standard, which is angiogram. And the people who interpreted the CT scans were blinded to the results of the angiogram and vice versa. So the question is, are the results valid? As we discussed earlier, validity is a spectrum. Studies can be weak or they can be strong or studies can be somewhere in between. In the case of this study, all of the validity criteria were met, so I believe it's a strong study. Now that we've decided that this is a strong study and we believe the results, it's time to interpret those results. The next video will go over how to interpret the results of this study.